Bless you, brothers and sisters. I want to uh, bring a word of encouragement and exhort you in this message, although it's a hard mes message, but it, I want to say these words to you, and it's for each and every one of you. Just think that you are here not by chance, but by God's choosing. The Lord has chosen for you to be here at this time in history, this day and this hour. You're not here by chance, but by his choosing, he made you the unique person you are. Each and every one of you, each and every one of us is unique. God doesn't copycat, doesn't make uh, uh, the same. He, he makes unique people. And so, and he compares you to no one else. And you lack nothing that his grace can't give you. He has allowed you to be here at this time in history to fulfill His special purpose, to fulfill His glory, to fulfill His will for this generation. So I wanted to start with that and to encourage you because each and every one of us are so important to the kingdom of God. And the Lord has a purpose for your life. He has more for you, for each of you. And he's not done with you. Amen. And so I'm going to go through uh, Jeremiah 51, which is a very strong uh, word in Revelation 18. It's very uh, strong in my heart. But uh, with it, I want to, to focus on one piece of it to encourage us. Because we are the warriors of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are his army. And not uh, we're not uh, here to... Um, bring destruction we're here to to exhort to encourage to love to preach the gospel to for the lord to use us to save people from out of the the grips of hell to save souls to to heal people amen so the, again as i was saying jeremiah 51 is speaking of the uh, destruction of babylon that Babylonian system that um, and so the that's speaking of the Antichrist amen and so um, but it talks also about the battle axis we are God's battle axis so when the Lord is talking in Jeremiah 51 about the battle axis he's in essence referring to Israel as his battle axis and so if we look real quickly at Jeremiah 1 and the Lord was talking to Jeremiah about his calling in Jeremiah 1 10 it says see I have set thee this day I've set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down to build and to plant so we're seeing how the Lord uses his vessels to do the work for the kingdom of God. So we see an account here for that. And later on in, in Jeremiah 1, 18, it says, For behold, I have made thee this day a defensed city, an iron pillar, and brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. And they shall fight against you. And the Lord says the same to us. They shall fight against us. But they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with you. Saith the Lord to deliver you. So the Lord is with us to deliver us. And, and whatever it is that, that the Lord has for us in our lives. But I wanted to, to uh, jump to that scripture. To point out that the Lord uses his vessels as his battle axes. Amen. And so he says the same in Jeremiah 51. Or, but it's also a symbolism of God's people being God's warriors in the spirit. And because we are in a spiritual war, my precious saints. And we know that. And so we war in the spirit. And it's speaking of his people are his battle axes they're god's weapons of war 
not for destruction, but for loving, for, for, for bringing forth the will of God, bringing forth the kingdom of God, to, to do the will of God, and to bring forth the, the, the gospel, as I was saying earlier. Amen. And so let's just start with uh, verse 18. It says, They are vanity and the work of errors. In the time of their visitation, they shall perish. I encourage you to read 51 uh, if you haven't done so already. It's very powerful. And it's it goes with, uh, with Revelation 18. And so it's talking about the destruction of the, the Babylon has fallen. And so uh, Jeremiah 51 uh, 19 it says the portion of Jacob is not like them for he is the former of all things and Israel is the rod of his inheritance the Lord of hosts is his name the one true God the only God hallelujah thou art my battle axe and weapons of war for with thee I will break in pieces the nations and with thee I will destroy kingdoms and we could do so by, by prayer and intercession amen if, if the, the body of Christ would just stand up and, 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 and pray and intercede and, and war in the spirit uh, against all this evil and, and preach the truth. As many pulpits are not doing. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider. And with thee I will break in pieces the chariot and his rider. With thee also I will break in pieces man and woman. And with thee I will break in pieces old and young. And with thee I will break in pieces the young and the, and the maid. And again, we're not saying for us, to, 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 this is not speaking of violence. This is speaking in the spirit and the Lord using his people for his glory and to do good. Amen. And not evil. And so, and I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and, and his flock. And with thee I will break in pieces the husbandman and with and his yoke of oxen. And with thee I will break in pieces captains and rulers. And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. It says, Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroys all the earth. And I will stretch out my hand upon thee, and roll thee down from the rocks, and will make thee a burnt mountain. And they shall not take of thee a stone for a corner, nor a stone for foundations. But thou shalt be desolate forever, saith the Lord. This is the Lord's doing, his judgment. Set ye up a standard in the land. Blow the trumpet among the nations. Prepare the nations against her. And the Lord is saying to his people, Blow the trumpet. Uh, uh, tell them the truth. Stand up for the Lord. If we don't stand up for the Lord now, what will it be when the true persecution is here? Amen. And so we have to stand up for the Lord. Let Shirach, Meshach, and Abednego. They stood for the Lord till the very end. So call together against her the kingdoms of Ararat, many Ashenas, and appoint a captain against her. Cause the horses to come up and as the rough caterpillars. Prepare against her the nations with the kings of the Medes, captains thereof, and all the rulers thereof, and all the land of his dominion. And the land shall tremble and sorrow. And every purpose of the Lord shall be performed against Babylon to make the land of Babylon a desolation without inhabitant. And we have to understand that the Lord will judge. And we're seeing a lot of injustices, but the vengeance is of the Lord. And uh, we'll go to uh, Revelation 18 here in a second. The mighty man of Babylon have forborne to fight. They have remained in their holes. Their might has failed. All their might and their, their, their arrogance will fail. They became as women. They have burned their, her dwelling places. Her bars are broken. And so um, let's go ahead and go to um, verse 45 because I want to go to that because it speaks specifically of the same thing the Lord is telling us to do 
Uh, let's start with 44. The same thing that the Lord is, is commanding us to do. Come out of our my people. That we not be partakers of our sins. And receive of their plagues. It talks about in, in Revelation 18. And so uh, Jeremiah 51, 44. And I will punish Baal in Babylon. And I will bring forth out of his mouth that which he has swallowed up. And the nations shall not flow together any more unto him. Yes, the wall of Babylon shall fall. And my people, go ye out of the midst of her, and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. There will be a, a, a fierce anger being poured out. And I know that we're not uh, uh, appointed to wrath. That's not what I'm saying. I'm reading straight from the word of the Lord. He's commanding us to come out of her. To not be of this world, to come out of her, not be partaking of their sins, to not be uh, participating in the system, this demonic system that's that's being unfolded right before our eyes. Unless your heart faint and you fear the rumor that shall be heard in the land, a rumor shall come on one year, and we're seeing all the lies being perpetrated amen and after that in another year shall come a rumor and violence in the land ruler against ruler just like the lord warned us in matthew 24 uh, kingdom against kingdom nation against nation therefore behold the days come that i will do judgment upon the graven images of babylon and her whole land shall be confounded and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her then the heaven and earth and all that is therein shall sing for Babylon, for the spoiler shall come unto her from the north, saith the Lord. As Babylon has caused the slain of Israel to fall, so at Babylon shall fall the slain of all the earth. If we jump to verse 55, it says, Because the Lord has spoiled Babylon and destroyed out of her great destroyed out of her the great voice when her waves do roar like great waters speaking of the blasphemy and all the abominations being done against the lord a noise of their voice is uttered because the spoiler is come upon her even upon babylon and her mighty men are taken every one of their bows are broken or is broken for the lord god of recompenses shall surely requite and I will make drunk her princes and her wise men, her captains and her rulers and her mighty men, and they shall sleep a perpetual sleep and not wake, saith the king whose name is the Lord of hosts, saith the Lord Jesus Christ, the almighty God. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the broad walls of Babylon shall utterly be broken, and her high gates shall be burned with fire, and the people shall labor in vain, and the folk in the fires, and they shall be weary. Thank you, Lord. Let's go ahead and go to um, Revelation 18. Revelation 18, 2, it talks about, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon is the great, is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And I truly believe that, that a lot of this, this agenda of transhumanism is going to bring forth this, this uh, habitation of devils, uh, people being used as hosts for all these demonic uh, things that are coming. And a uh, cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And so, um, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants, we know who the merchants are of the earth, are waxed rich, very rich, through the abundance of her delic delicacies, through the abundance of exploiting the poor people. And I, hear, I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Just as it was telling us in Revelation, if, forgive me, in Jeremiah 51. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, 
and God has remembered her iniquities. Speaking of judgment, the judgments that are come going to come severely. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works in the cup which she has filled, filled to her double. How much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she said in her heart, just as we see them saying, they say in their heart, I sit a queen and I'm no widow and shall see no sorrow. They think that God is not watching, but the Lord has everything recorded. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, and it's, it's all recorded in the courts of heaven. The plagues are coming one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. And the kings of the earth who has committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour thy judgment is come. And that's how quickly it will come. In one hour the judgment will come. And we're seeing judgments already. And we're seeing the, the demonic agenda and those behind using um, the agenda to, to do all these evil things. But And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buys uh, their merchandise anymore. Their merchandise of gold, silver, precious stones, and so forth. All the, the wealth... Amen. And the merchants of these things which were made, were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of, their tor of her torment, weeping and wailing, speaking of great sorrows, and saying, Alas, alas, the great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches is come to nothing. All the, the, the riches, all the, uh, that's speaking of a great collapse. Okay, and we're seeing the engineered collapse being done to the, um, with the ships and the ports, the, and every shipmaster and all the company uh, and ships and sailors, and as many as trade by sea stood afar off we're seeing the engineered collapse taking place before our eyes and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning saying that city what city is like unto this great city and they cast dust on their heads as the speaking of uh, sackcloth and ashes the, the 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 regrets they cried weeping and wailing saying alas alas that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour she is made desolate. We're seeing the inflation. The, the inflation of everything. Food, everything that, that we need. The, the, the collapse of the supply chain being done by design. Um, so again... Uh, rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it unto the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians, pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman, or whatsoever craft he be, shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. This is a total um, devastation. And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries, 
That's the word pharmakia. Where all the nations deceived, and that is playing out today. By thy sorceries in the pharmakia were all the nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of the prophets, the saints, the blood of the saints of Jesus, and of all that were slain upon the earth. If we look at uh, Revelation 20, uh, verse 4, it talks about those that are beheaded. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And we know that there's the technology to do that, to uh, get that technology in the brain and brainwash the people. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. We see in Revelation 21.8, um, or 21.7, He that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. And this is what we keep uh, in our minds and so but the fearful those that are, that are that are cowardly those that are fearing the unbelieving the abominable the murderers the whoremongers the sorcerers the idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone which is the second death and I, I, I have to say again I saw the lake of fire I saw this And it's a very fearful thing. It's a, an, an eternal damnation. That never, ever, ever ends. The torment, torture, and pain, and agony. And, and so again, the Lord is, is warning us to come out of her. The Lord is warning us to not be fearful. To not be unbelieving. And, and, and He doesn't want us partaking of the sins that this system is committing. And so, and, and to come out of her. And so, I wanted to, to, to empower you because the Lord has you here for such a time as this. And even though times are going to get very dark, we are His light. And we are to carry the gospel forth and carry forth what the Lord has called us to each one of us to do and to do his will and to be out about our father's business because the night is coming when no man can work, folks. And so now while you have the chance, do what he called you to do. I love you. I bless you. I always bring messages in love and to bring people to the Lord and because I want souls saved for the kingdom of God that will go to heaven in eternal glory and not to go to hell and be in eternal damnation and so I love you I bless you until soon again Lord willing be blessed